in the last stream chat, we were, of course, working on trying to defeat the Keystone Trials over here, um, in which rounds and rounds or waves and waves of Endermen were spawned by the Trial Keystone. And uh, at the end of it, we were hopefully going to have enough glitched hearts to make enough of this uh, glitched obsidian here to build another portal and head on through into the nether, which I believe is going to unlock the next quest line in this mod pack. However, if you watched the last episode slash stream, you will know uh, that uh, twice we failed somewhat miserably uh, to defeat the trials. I believe both times we died uh, on either wave three or wave four of seven waves. So really, we only got uh, about halfway through them and uh, presumably they get more and more difficult with each consecutive wave. So presumably, like in terms of difficulty, we didn't even get to the halfway point uh, in terms of those fights. And that does make me think that it's possible we could do with some better weaponry and or armor before we uh, before we head on through again. I'm a little peeved that I made so much uh, mana steel armor actually, chat, because what we could have done, and uh, it's not a huge bo uh, boost, but what we could have done is we could have uh, thrown our mana, uh, our mana steel through the Alphine portal to create Elementium, which is not strictly that much better. It still has uh, plus six armor there, uh, but it does give us a chance for Pixies to apply a potion effect, uh, which hopefully is, uh, is a positive thing. Uh, plus, it is pink, which looks, you know, just great it matches our uh, our chests and our wood that we have lying around um, unfortunately i don't think that you can do like i don't think you can just throw this through here although that would also be interesting yeah no, i think i might have just deleted that uh, that helmet there chat which you know is not necessarily an action that i would recommend now we could also chat look at making a, a tinker's sword as well right now we are just using our soul scribe which does work very well on the enderman but less so on the glitched friend of ours and i was taking a quick look through the available materials that we have for making swords, and it seems like firewood might not be a bad idea here. People have also pointed out uh, to me in the Twitch chat and in the YouTube comments that uh, the firewood sword uh, or the firewood uh, material does come with the auto smelt buff, and uh, auto smelt does mean, uh, of course, that if you add it to like a pickaxe, for example, and you go mining, you will, instead of getting ores, it will just automatically smelt the ores, and thus when you break an ore, it will just drop ingots, and uh, if you combine that with something like lapis to get a look on your pickaxe, you actually have a chance to get multiple ingots every time you break an ore, so um, we might want to go ahead and add some kind of a firewood part, maybe a firewood stick, to our end pickaxe and replace the current uh, wooden tool rod that we have um, at the moment. But um, also looking at swords here, I'm looking at attack damage, and there are not really many swords out there that have a higher attack damage than the firewood. And those that do, like this prismarine here, and there's also a manual, but those are much more, those are resources we can't get right now. So I'm thinking I might go ahead and make some kind of firewood sword here. We could maybe augment it with like a bone tool rod, or maybe like a cactus tool rod. I'm not quite sure uh, what the best combination there's going to be. But uh, if we go ahead and quickly take a peek at what is required to make like a broadsword. We need a tool rod, a sword blade, and a wide guard. Okay, so a sword blade, we can make a wide guard, we can also make, and uh, of course, a tool rod uh, pattern we do already have. I have been saying uh, for quite some time, chat, that I should make a pattern chest, and uh, I keep not doing it. And so, in the interest of, uh, of getting things done right at the start um, of the stream today, I will go ahead and uh, quickly whip one of those up, just so we can take basically all of these uh, patterns here out of our chest and free up a bit of space for, uh, for some other other items. So let's grab one of you and uh, quickly make a, a regular old Minecraft chest. Kapow. And then if we do something like that, we get a lovely old pattern chest, which for now, I guess I'll put down like right about here. We should really put it right next to the part builder, I believe. So let's move the uh, crafting station because I'm fairly certain that if I do this, you can then access, yeah, all of the, uh, all of the stencils from inside the part builder, which is real nice. Uh, and so we can kind of just swap those out as and, when we, uh, as and when we need them, which is very nice indeed. There are a few swords you can make from Tinkers. Uh, chat has just recommended a cleaver here. The benefit of the, the cleaver does have a higher attack damage. Uh, the trade-off is that it's much slower. You can add redstone, of course, to increase the attack speed. I am, I'm normally not a huge fan of the cleavers because of how, how slow they are, but given that we only have to use it on one enemy, that being the glitched man, I think it might not be a bad idea because we might be able to kill him in maybe one or two hits with um, a very powerful cleaver, as opposed to, uh, you know, more more hits with a, a standard weapon. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of for it, chat. I think I might go with the cleaver. It is going to require some different uh, patterns, but I think that's totally fine. Could you move forward a bit, my, my friend? I want to, uh, I want your end chunk, but I also want to uh, fight you in the most cowardly way possible. Thank you. 
and I will get rid of this as well. So if we're going to make a cleaver, unfortunately you can't make the cleaver in the tool station here. For that, you do need a tool forge. And the tool forge is made with a, a tool station. It's basically an upgraded version of the tool station that can do everything a tool station can do and more. And to make it, you need a tool station, three seared stone or seared brick, and then four of basically any metal block. You can even use four blocks of redstone, which is very interesting. That is 36 redstone. And you know what? I'm actually totally fine with that. I think that 36 redstone is a much nicer price to pay. Like, it's a lot easier for us to come across redstone. And also, we get this cool-looking tool forge that has red legs. So I'm all for it. Uh, to make the uh, seared brick here, we need 12, or to make three of them, we need 12 seared brick, which is made with, uh, of course, 12 grout. And the 12 grout is made with sand, gravel, and clay, all of which shouldn't really be too bad. I think we do have uh, exactly zero cobblestone. <laughs> I really thought we had a little bit left over, but apparently not. That is fine. Let's go get some more uh, cobblestone chat and see if we can't get enough sand, gravel, and clay to make uh, 12 grout. All right. So a little bit of... Uh, resource generating later we now have 12 grout which we'll go ahead and smelt up over here boom and boom once that's done we should basically have everything it takes to make our uh, tool forge at which point we can then look at making the cleaver now material cost is eight oofed <laughs> so if we're gonna make a um a cleaver here out of uh, firewood we need eight firewood to make that happen yeah okay so we need six more that's actually, it's not too bad. Like, it is going to require us killing uh, a few endermen here, but that's really not too, too bad, I don't think. So that should be enough end-infused iron ore here to make the cleaver. And uh, hopefully all of our uh, grout has also smelted now, so we should have what it takes, chat, I think, to make our uh, tool forge. Let's go and uh, quickly take a peek in here. Uh, oh, no, it's not quite done. We need a little bit more fuel down there. That's fine. Um, while we wait for that, let's go drop all of our end-infused iron ore into the old mana pool. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That should then be everything that we need to make a large sword blade out of firewood just as soon as we actually make all of those end infused chunks into firewood. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Beautiful. All right. And boom. There we go. So we have our large sword blade here, which does come with uh, quite, the, uh, quite the attack boost. So, we should now also be done on bricks. We are indeed. So, let's craft those up into seared bricks. And then, it should just be a simple chat. That's doing two, two, three, and the tool station. Like that. And there we go. We got a, a tool forge with uh, extraordinarily red legs. <laughs> All right. And at that point, then, if we're going to go for the cleaver, we need two tough tool rods, one large sword blade, which we of course have, and then one large plate. And the question really is, what do we want to make those out of? Because what we choose to make those out of is going to affect our sword, right? Like our attack damage and whatnot. Uh, we do need to make a pattern for both of those. So we'll go large uh, tough tool rod as well as large plate. There we go. And then we've got a decision to make, chat. I guess we could look at the uh, the large plates and get an idea of like what um, what material has like what effect. You can see each one has like an attack value. We could go with obsidian chat. Like an obsidian blade might not be a terrible idea. All right, so eight obsidian later and that gets us the large plate there. I'll go and throw that in the old uh, tool forge as well. Uh, so now we just need two tough rods. So I think I will make at least one of them out of wood simply because that does give us the ecological upgrade, which means that our tool um, will slowly repair itself over time, which uh, seems very useful. And then for the last one, um, I think I might just go with like endstone or something. I should also take that off my hotbar there. What does endstone give us? Endstone gives us the uh, interference modifier, right? I don't think that the tool rod has any effect on attack damage. So I don't know if, you know, if using like a burn tool rod here would, would help at all. Uh, like if we, if we hold shift, it just modifies the, um, the handle durability and, and whatnot. So I think this is probably fine. Uh, so chat is recommending that we test out the burn rod. So that does boost our attack damage. I didn't think it would, but apparently the, uh, the fractured modifier here, your tool damage is increased. So it doesn't actually uh, do it, you know, via the stats. I wonder if having two burn tool rods would be useful then. I don't know if that would increase it even further. I do kind of dig this though. 
Uh, people did also point out that you can use paper as well. And the benefit of paper is that uh, it gives you an extra modifier. This guy has, yeah, so now we go, for, we go up to four modifiers. Um, our durability does go from 868 down to 92. Which I think is way too much of a, a trade-off chat for one extra, extra modifier. Yeah, so I think we're going to stick with wood. I think this is good chat. I think this configuration here with the large firewood sword blade, the obsidian large plate, the burnt tough tool rod and the wooden tough tool rod works out well. We get auto smelt, which is not too useful, uh, but we do get uh, fractured, which gives us more damage. We get beheading just from the uh, cleaver. It has that uh, by default, even though we don't really need it. Uh, ecological gives us the, uh, the regeneration and then an attack damage of 14 is pretty high. Uh, the trade-off, of course, is that uh, the attack speed is slow, but we can throw some redstone onto this guy to make it faster. Right now, its attack speed is... 0.7. If we put this on, it goes up to 0.84, <laughs> which is not super high. It does also get that cool red uh, streak going through it as well. Uh, we can go even further if we want. Although I don't really want to use all of our redstone if I can avoid it. We can also put a diamond on that. That's true. Yeah, the diamond does also increase the durability and it also increases the attack speed. I think the diamond uh, gives it a general overall bump. Yeah, up to 15.17, which is very nice indeed. And we get that durability bump as well. So you know what? Sure. I'd love to put quartz on here, but we don't have access to it. Nether quartz would give us even higher attack damage as well. Um, but you know what? 15.17, I think I'm pretty happy with. That is more than, uh, well, it's just shy of triple uh, the soul scribe there. So I think that is probably going to be just fine, chat. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to maybe make a second soul scribe because our current one is running low on durability. And then I think we're just going to try and fight this guy. We also are going to get golden apples, actually. Let's not forget that. Uh, we do have gold and we do have apples. So we can make the regular golden apples. Uh, we can't make the higher tier ones. That's fine. We'll go with regular for now, I guess. And uh, <laughs> we'll make, I guess, one gold apple. Uh, do we have more gold? We do. Not a ton. Chat, I'm not going to lie. We got not much, but we do have a little bit. Just use your giant sword. The giant sword is still worse, though, right? Like, it's... The giant sword is good, but if I go to kill this enderman, for example, my soul scribe kills an enderman in two hits. So one. And if I can hit him, two. Whereas the big sword takes one, two. I think I messed up. Like, I think I didn't wait for it to, to you know, bounce back. But uh, let's have a look. So six day. Yeah, it only does eight hearts. Even with like max refill, whereas the uh, the soul scribe here does ten, and it it is ready faster. So we're definitely going to use the soul scribe for killing Enderman, like hundred percent. The cleaver is not anywhere near as good, but uh, for mobs that are not Enderman, the cleaver is definitely the way to uh, to go. Uh, I'll make one more golden apple here. I don't think we're going to need a ton of them. I'm hoping that two will be uh, be sufficient. Yeah. All right, so let's make one more. Uh, soul scribe here chat let's get some uh, endstone let's make ourselves the old uh, bull uh, binding as well as the little blade and then i believe it was a mana pearl as well as maybe another um oh we need an extraterrestrial chunk okay i thought it might have been another uh, firewood chunk thankfully it is not all right so that is our like 900th soul scribe ready for us. Um, but I think we might be good to go, chat. I think that we might be good to go. So we've got our bow, we've got our sword, we've got our backup soul scribe and our regular soul scribe. I think we'll start with the, the full one here. We've got golden apples, should we need them? We've got a shield. Uh, we do need armor, actually. That's a, a, a big one that uh, you know I may have <laughs> may or may not have forgotten about. Uh, so I did mention at the start that I kind of like the idea of getting some uh, elementium armor. So uh, I don't know, chat, if we have enough mana to make 48 mana steel. Turns out we definitely do. We do need a little bit more here, but if we throw like all of that through there, we're going to start getting some uh, some elementium. 20. We do need 24, of course, so we need uh, eight more iron, but uh, we're currently smelting that up over in uh, in here. 
But uh, that is going to allow us to make this uh, pretty nifty looking elementium armor. Just hit the elytra off temporarily, but that is fine. There we go. So eight more iron gets us eight more mana steel. And that gets us, of course, uh, four more elementium. There we go. And that gets us the final piece of the armor. And not only does it give us a discount on mana, it also gives us a chance to get uh, pixie potions, apparently. And I mean, chat. Chat. If anybody... <laughs> that freaking mask, man. If anybody looks like they're ready for a fight, it's this guy right here. <laughs> a freaking a gosh dang mask. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Look at that. Look at this freaking guy. He, he is ready for battle, chat. He is ready for battle. Terra Steel is better, but Terra Steel is also significantly more expensive. Like, you need, I think it's three pieces of Terra Steel. Also, the Terra Steel armor requires runes as well. So you also need runes on top of that. And I don't even think we can make all of the runes yet required. Like, we don't have what it takes to make cake. So, um, yeah, Terra Steel, not, uh, not, po uh, not possible for us. We do need one more keystone. Which, again, if memory serves me right, is two iron nuggets, one diamond, and two... Excuse me, my friends? Would you like to, uh... Is it the armor? What? <laughs> what What happened here? I didn't... Surely I did not look at this many endermen. Are you... Are you affronted by my wonderful pink outfit? <laughs> what in the world happened there? My goodness. Um, what was I saying, chat? <laughs> we need, um... Where was I? I've lost my... Oh, we need the, the, the keystone, of course. Maybe it was the keystone chat that they uh, didn't approve of. So one diamond, two enderpearls, and two iron. Boom. 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 Oh, it's two diamonds. I see. I see. Okay. A little less than ideal. It does mean we only have one more attempt before we have to go diamond mining. All right. So we have the keystone. Let's go kill at least one enderman with that keystone to bind it to the Enderman. I think we're as ready as we're going to be with our current outfit. Sword, bow for the blazes, maybe. Endstone, soul scribe. Okay. And we've got the golden apples. Should we need them? Put the key in. Start trial. Okay. We want to be backing up away from these guys. Oh, no, I guess kind of backing up away from them so that but we also don't want to leave the area, right? Okay, wave two. That's one. That's two. Okay, wave cleared. He's dead. Three to go. Two to go. The fact they only come one at a time is real nice. He's dead. Eop. We ready for the next wave. Got to keep an eye out for Glitched Man. I think he comes on the next wave. Oh, one more opponent. My bad. There's also a baby zombie here. Golden Apple. Eaten. To hopefully defend against Glitched Man if he arrives. We might actually do this, Chet. The baby zombies. Not, not helping the matter. But they're a lot easier than glitched men. The hitbox is too small. I can fight seven endermen one at a time. Actually, totally fine. Extremely doable. I see you over there. You're making my life harder than it needs to be, Blaze Man. Don't you knock me out of this zone. Get out of here. Give me a golden apple. Don't burn to death, Isaac. No. Okay. Lower mount, lower mount. Gosh, no. This is not the end. I mean, it is the end. It's the final wave. But this is not where I die. That end that, that golden apple is doing a lot of work here, chat, I think. We need to kill three endermen. Please just die. <laughs> We're so close. We've done it. <laughs> we have done it. Okay. Whew. Chat, he's done it. First try on the on the new stream. We've done it. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Get out, get, get out. I die here, actually. Like in, I'm going to die post-combat on a white. We're actually fine. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, dice to fire after 
after fight, after winning fight. Okay. We also got a Blaze Rod, which is real nice, because uh, right now we don't have any other way of getting those, although we are about to rebuild uh, and go to the end, so they uh, probably are not going to be too difficult for us to get going forward. Okay. That was good, chat. That was good. We got uh, five uh, Corrupt Glitched Hearts. So, now we need, what, four, eight, I think we need 12 Obsidian, right? If we're going to make the portal, is that right? No, three, six, seven, eight, we need 10. So we need 10 Glitched Obsidian, which means we need 10 regular Obsidian, which we can go and get from the boat. That's fine. And we also need 10 Glitched Infused Iron. These are made um, in some way or shape or form. So it says, uh, TLDR, drop some fragments, lapis, and gold ingots into a body of water and hope for the best. You found that lapis is good is a good stabilization agent for unstable glitched fragments. After the fragments are stable, they desperately seek out a material to latch onto. You think that gold might be the strong a strong host. The entire process is delicate. It needs to be performed in water or the materials won't bind properly. So we throw water, gold, and lapis into the Oh, sorry, we throw, we throw a fragment, lapis, and gold into the water, and that gets us this. So it says, made by stabilizing unstable glitched fragments. Unstable glitched fragments. These are acquired, crafted by crushing a corrupted glitched heart against obsidian. I see. Okay. So we have, I think, six. We have seven corrupted glitched hearts. So if we take a piece of obsidian, and we throw it down, and then we left-click, that gets us three unstable glitched fragments, each one can be used to make an unstable glitched ingot, presumably. So I think we just need 10 of these, but again, we're gonna have to go with 12 because of the way that this works out. But I think 12 of those can then be combined with lapis and gold, both of which we have in water. Let's see, I'll do one at a time. So we'll do fragment, lapis, gold. Those are gonna bubble away. And fragment, nice. Okay, I don't know if we have to do those one at a time. You should be able to do them in bulk. Okay, so let's try. Uh, we only need eight more. I'm going to keep these glitch fragments just in case we need them for something else. But we'll do eight, eight, and eight. Like that. And hopefully that makes us all eight fragments. Or all eight ingots. It does, nice. So now we've got ten glitched infused ingot chats. We're pretty much there. Now all we need is seven more obsidian, and then enough mana to make 10 of these on the old uh, terrestrial agglomeration plate, which I think maybe we might have. We did use a fair bit of mana on making the old uh, armor here, but yeah, it looks like we're pretty good. So uh, let's go get some more obsidian chat. Actually, let's eat first, because <laughs> we're quite low on, uh, on HP here. Chat, we now have 10 obsidian, and 10 glitched infused ingots. So, if we go and throw one of each onto the old terrestrial agglomeration plate, I was hoping that that might work. Oh no, we need to change the terrestrial agglomeration plate. I see. Okay, we need four purple blocks instead of four lapis. Interesting. Okay. I did not realize the actual structure of the, uh, the multi-block has changed. That is completely fine and, uh, and very, very doable. And in fact, it would be nice to have the lapis back as well. So if we do one, two, three, and four, and then do the same thing again with the obsidian and the glitched infused ingot, one and two, that will hopefully, it's obsidian chat. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. One, two, three, four, Five. That does mean that we now don't have enough obsidian. But we can we can start. So one and two. There we go. Okay. And that's nice and fast. Compared with the uh terrestrial animation, that is much quicker. Good, good. So yeah, I think we need at least ten of these to make a, uh, a kind of standard uh, Minecraft nether portal. But this time, of course, out of the uh the glitched obsidian. It looks like, thankfully, we do have enough uh, enough mana for this, and probably enough mana for uh, for all ten, if I were to guess. And um, but we are going to have to find at least three more obsidian, which I don't think is going to be too difficult. Like uh, there are a few structures around that do have it. We could also go and uh, grab it from near the end dragon as well if we wanted to.
The glitch armor is so expensive, chat. We do not have anywhere near what it takes to make this, right? We don't have the angel ring. We don't have the flugel t uh, tiara. We don't have a ghast. We don't have jet propulsion. We don't have platinum. We don't have sapphire. We don't have padded leggings. We don't have a precision assembler. We're not making the glitch armor anytime soon. Apologies <laughs> to those who uh, who want it, but uh, alas, it is not not in the cards in the near future. So we've managed to get eight of the uh, of the ten glitched obsidian here. We do need two more, but we're out of mana. And so I think what we're going to do, chat, is while we wait for uh, our endo flames to produce enough mana to make two more, let me uh, dump some of my items into the uh, the old chests here, and uh, let's take a look at a few of the other quests along uh, the top, because um, I believe that the Nether is still going to be empty. It says the nether is empty right now, uh, but you can change that. Combining, by combining the power of the biome scanner and the terrain scanner, one can easily shape the world in seconds. They do require a lot more power than normal machines, though. Craft a terrain scanner and a biome scanner. And that does come after Avengers. Although simpler machines can be crafted by hand, you'll have to use an assembler for more complex machines. And uh, presumably, the assembler, which is this guy here, um, is required to make either the biome or the terrain scanner. Yeah, the terrain scanner is made in the assembler with a building gadget, an empty map, and a terrain scanner casing, which looks uh, scary enough in and of itself, as well as 100 millibuckets of solder, which uh, I believe there is also a quest for. There is indeed. Uh, solder is a great alloy for creating machines. To create a bucket of solder, simply right-click on fire with a bucket of solder powder. So a bucket of solder powder is a bucket and then four solder powder. The solder powder is a pestle and mortar with lead and tin dust, both of which we should be able to get fairly easily with our sag mill. And then, of course, divided by zero, if you want more generators, you can try some from extra utilities too, but with nether quartz, uh, without nether quartz, crafting the machine block can be quite a hassle. So uh, the machine block here is required, and the standard recipe requires the uh, industrial machine chassis, which we do not yet have the ability to make. The alternate recipe down here, which requires the simple machine ca uh, chassis that we can make, uh, does also require four soot-covered redstone, as well as four unstable ingots so unstable ingots are made by crafting iron sticks and diamonds however the ingot is highly unstable and will explode after 10 seconds so you have to craft the four ingots and then complete the other craft within 10 seconds otherwise uh, you will explode and die and lose the ingots as well so uh, a little thing to bear in mind there <laughs> that makes it just a little bit more more interesting but uh, that should be totally fine i think it does mean we need four diamonds and right now we do not have that many We've got three. Okay, so we have one diamond ore here. I assume we can probably use that. Uh, can we throw that through the sag mill to get more? We can. Okay, so we'll, we'll sag mill up the diamond ore that we have here. That should get us enough diamonds to make our first machine. Uh, we do also need some fuel in there, but that's fine. Uh, we're looking, of course, to get the uh, machine casing and then the assembler. This guy here. Um, so we need four suckered redstone. We'll start with that, I guess, because that seems... Maybe the easiest part of the whole process. One, two, three, and four. Beautiful. Uh, we'll then also go ahead and grab our diamonds. We've got six now. Nice. Good stuff. So we also need another machine chassis. That seems fine. Do we still have one bedrock? We do. One uh, grain of infinity, that is. We do indeed. So to make the uh, the old simple chassis here, we just need four iron bars and four iron ingots, both of which seem very doable. We have the four iron bars already. And we hopefully also have... Some iron ingots, although I think I might have used maybe all of them. Oh, we have a few in here, actually. Uh, I was going to say maybe all of them on our armor, but thankfully it does seem we have a few of them left over. So uh, one more there should get us everything for the chassis, and then we need four more to make the four ingots. I think this is going to be fine. I'm, I'm hoping we can get this done before the explosion happens. I don't see that being a problem for us. If the explosion does happen, that's, that's going to be bad because we're going <laughs> to lose our diamonds. Um, I do also think, chat, if I'm not mistaken, this has to be done in a regular crafting table like you have to do the um the craft with the unstable ingots in a, in a regular crafting table so i will uh make a new one there we go all right let's see chat so i could also do with a bit more <laughs> inventory space as well uh, if at all possible here so we need a few more sticks that's fine do we have everything else we need here let me bookmark this uh, machine block so we need four Soot covered redstone. We need four of the unstable iron ingots, and we need the one machine chassis. I'm going to try and make sure everything is in a, a centralized place. So, four of these ingots is four diamonds, four sticks, four iron. So, 
four diamonds, four sticks, four iron. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think I think we're I think we're fine here, chat. I think we're fine. One. Oh, they don't stack. Okay. One. Oh no. Two. Three. Four. No. <laughs> One, two, three, four, and chasse. Oh, we did it. <laughs> okay. That was difficult or more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I was not expecting them to not stack. I was not expecting that I couldn't shift click them all out. I had to pull them out one at a time and then put them in one at a time. But it's fine. We got the uh, we got the machine block chat. And so uh, we should now be able to move on to make the old, uh, the old assembler as well. Whew. Okay. Uh, the assembler here, though, does look quite pricey. So to make it, we need a basic capacitor, which is probably the easiest of all the recipes. We also need two copper wire, which doesn't seem too bad. A copper plate and some wire cutters, although it would appear that for the copper plate, we either need a metal press or a um, a smeltery. And I think of those two, the smeltery is probably the easiest of the two. We then also need a CCB, a ceramic circuit board, which is made by smelting up a ceramic circuit board base which is more copper wire, more capacitors, more redstone, and a clay board, which is pottery clay, which is clay and bone meal. All right, that doesn't seem too, too bad. And then on top of that, we also need some dark steel ingots, which are an alloy between obsidian, coal powder, and iron. And we need four of those. Do we have four obsidian, chat? We don't. We have three. So we are going to have to head back through and uh, quickly grab some more obsidian from our dragon friend. But that's actually... Fine, let's do that now before we start with the uh, the rest of it, because I kind of want to get the alloy smelter going sooner rather than later, because the simple alloy smelter is very, very slow. So um, I think, chat, that we are onto something now. So uh, we do need some pulverized coal. One, two, three, and four. We'll go ahead and run that through the old sag mill here. And then, uh, yeah, four iron, four pulverized coal, and four obsidian should get us the, uh, the four dark steel required here. Yeah, that should be good. That might take a little minute there, and it also does look like it needs some more uh, fuel as well, but that is fine. We can throw that in. Um, and then after that, we, of course, do need to get uh, the quest over here. So the one, the solder bucket seems also pretty doable. Uh, once the coal's done, we'll put in some tin and some lead. And then if we're going to make both the terrain and the biome scanner, I'll go ahead and bookmark both of these. Well, there are four tiers of biome scanner, but I guess we're going to stick with basic for now. That sounds about right. So uh, both of these are made in the assembler. Both require one bucket of solder. So presumably we need to make two buckets of it. Which means for us, getting uh, two buckets of solder powder. So we need eight solder powder. You do get two at a time, so we need four lead and four tin. That seems very doable, chat. That seems very doable. While that's doing its thing, let's do um, four obsidian, four coal dust, and four iron, like so. Uh, again, that is going to take quite a bit of time. These are very slow, as you can see by the progress bar there, but it should be done uh, in a somewhat, hopefully, reasonable <laughs> amount of time. The uh, tin dust is also almost there. It does appear that our power is struggling to run both machines at once, which makes a lot of sense. We just have the one uh, simple generator. I, uh, I'm going to take out the lead here because I really want to make sure that my... Please don't reset. Okay, it doesn't. I really want to make sure that the alloy smelter gets done. Although that lead is basically done there. There we go. That's the the lead dust. So lead and tin with the old pestle and mortar gets us the solder powder. We'll of course go for all eight. And then do we have a, uh, a bucket lying around? We do indeed. We have two of them in fact. And so uh, if we do something like this and then one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, that gets us two buckets of solder. And then we have to right click these on fire, I believe. Yeah, simply right-click on fire with a bucket of solder. Okay, do we have a flint and steel? We definitely do because we used it for the grains of infinity. Boom. Let's uh, right-click. Oh, I see. <laughs> and actually, I thought it was going to just make... I thought it was just going to swap the bucket of solder in my inventory for a bucket... Like, for a solder bucket. I did not think it was going to put the, uh, the liquid down, but that is fine. There we go. So those are the two buckets required there. I do not believe that we're going to need any more than that, at least not for the biome scanner and the terrain scanner. Now, these do also require some other pieces. We're going to need two more diamonds for the building gadget, 
I think we have two diamonds. We do indeed. That's perfect. Hopefully those are the last ones required. The map also seems pretty easy. The terrain casing requires those dark steel ingots. Do we need any more for that? Oh, no. The biome scanner also requires end steel. And, oh, we also need, oh gosh. So each of the other blocks here, the assembler requires a machine block, but then also uh, the terrain scanner and the biome scanner also require machine blocks. So we are going to have to get four more diamonds to make four more unstable ingots, uh, or eight more even if we're going to make two more machine blocks for the terrain scanner and the uh, the biome scanner. So that is going to be interesting. Um, I did see this recipe here, the small plate presser. So is the idea here that you put a block of copper between obsidian and a piston and then kaplunk it and you get plates? It needs to be a small presser, not a piston. Oh, I see. There is a... Ah, okay. That's actually fine. That's basically, for all intents and purposes, just a piston <laughs> with some extra iron. Uh, that does mean we actually do need extra iron, though, which as of right now, we uh, seemingly uh, do not have, which is less than ideal, but that's okay. We can, uh, you know, run some more through the old sag mill real quick. I say real quick. It is very slow. The alloy smelter is getting there, though. We're at three out of four. We, uh, we do have the obsidian, which is good. I guess we'll do that just like right about here. We'll try and set up a little small, uh, a little small plate making setup. All right, let's give this a go, chat. So let's make a small presser and let's put that small presser like, I think right here. I think you want to put it like one block above the obsidian like that. And then my assumption is that if we do something like this, get ourselves a lever, put that lever down there and then throw a block of copper on the ground that we might get four copper plates. It's not the best conversion rate in the world. We could definitely do with getting, uh, you know, more more plates for our copper. But given our current lack of, of other options, I think it's probably our best bet at getting copper here. I can't imagine that we place the block. Let's have a look, though. Although, it maybe. Like, it does show a question mark. Yeah, I guess we'll try placing it. Oh, we do place it. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's uh, that's interesting to say the least. So that gets us four copper plates. I actually don't know how many copper plates we need. Let me do a quick check here. So the terrain scanner, none of these need copper plates. It is a one-to-one -one ratio of copper plates to um, copper wire, at least until we get the metal press, which I don't know if we can make just yet, uh, but we'll use the shears for now to make the copper wire. So we need one there. And the CCB here requires four mods. We need five for the terrain scanner. And then for the biome scanner, we need two more uh, plus four more, so six more. So I think we need 11 plates in total. And right now we have four. So I guess we need two more copper blocks, chat. I think we should be pretty much there, chat. I think we need two more blocks of copper. That's going to get us a total of 12 plates. There we go. Kind of, I, 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 guess, I was going to say I kind of wish that didn't pop off, but I guess if we put it like here, that probably works and uh, probably doesn't require me to have to keep replacing it. But uh, 12 copper plates. Let's grab our shears. And let's make some copper wire, shall we? So I think we needed like 10. So I'll stick that for now. We can always make more if we need it. And then do we have what it takes, finally, to make an assembler? I think we're pretty close. We need some gold nuggets and we need those grains of infinity that we just got. We might actually need more than 16 grains of infinity now that I think about it. But uh, we can cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and make at least two capacitors. And I should really stop using this uh, crafting table here because it's not the crafting station and thus my items keep falling out of it when I'm not uh, not using it. Uh, what do I need for here? Yes, yeah, so we need two more. Actually, we need at least one more capacitor, uh, which is just a little bit more in the way of gold nuggets. That is completely doable. Uh, I know we're going to need at least another one as well, so I'll make a, I'll make a fourth one. That is totally fine. So here we're just missing redstone and the clay board. Do we have clay? I don't think we do. We can, of course, make clay fairly easily with some of our uh, cobblestone here. Uh, but it would appear that currently we are out of clay. That is totally fine. So we'll do one, two, three, four. I'll do five just because we have it. And then we'll do one, two, three, four, and five. That gets us all of our clay. Uh, bone meal we do have. So we'll do you and you, one and two. And then that should get us the clay board. It does indeed. At which point, chat, I'm fairly certain uh, that we are on track for the old CCB here. We just need a little bit of redstone. 
Boom. That does require smelting, but that is, again, totally doable. And at that point, chat, I think we have basically everything, finally, to make the, uh, the assembler. Yeah, the machine block we do already have, I believe. It's in here. It is indeed. Again, we are going to have to make another one of those, but that's fine. There we go. All right. <laughs> the assembler is finally acquired, chat. Okay, okay. We can move that in a second because it does need redstone flux, but it's down. Now, I think, chat, I think for now, the only machine that we really need, the quest does want us to make both the terrain and biome scanner. But if I'm not mistaken, I think that the terrain scanner might be the only one that we need. We are also just one glitched obsidian away from success, but we're also, uh, you know, not quite there on the mana front either. Again, I will augment this a little bit to hopefully uh, speed that up. We can start building this nether portal. We have nine of the ten blocks required. Uh, we do also have to have a rune of fire, which I think we do have, right? Yeah, we do. The rune of fire is used to uh, to light the portal. It does mention that in the old uh, the old quest book. I think we'll build this like maybe over here. Uh, I think I'll leave this block missing for now, just because it's probably gonna be easier to leave one of those out than it is to leave one of the uh, the top blocks out. It looks almost like uh, Christmas themed chat <laughs> with the greenery. But there we go. That's uh, basically that portal taken care of. We're just missing the one piece of glitched obsidian right there. And the only thing standing in our way now, chat, between us and the nether is a little bit of mana. Chat, we have done it. All right, that is the 10th and final glitched obsidian. Boom. All we need to do now is grab our fire rune, which I believe is hiding out over in here. Right click on the portal. Boom. And chat, I believe that we are able to head on through finally to the nether, which as expected and as explained by the quest book is indeed quite simply just a void world. But we could now, chat, if we wanted to move our whole base of operations over to the nether. If we were fed up of those endermen, we could finally move. And there's also more glitched obsidian here, actually. So we could uh, maybe nab some of that and uh, take it through with us if we wanted to. But that is that quest complete. So now we just need to make the terrain scanner and the biome scanner. And then we could start rebuilding the uh, the nether. And I think once we complete this quest, once we get our first, uh, first bit of netherrack, we're going to unlock a new advancement. For the uh, for the second kind of stage of the uh, of the mod pack, but I think chat that is probably going to do it for today. I think between streams, I'm going to spend a bit of time maybe uh, upgrading our mana generation system because right now we're not really generating the mana that fast. The setup that we have works, you know, over a long period of time. It does generate mana, uh, you know, slowly and continuously. But um, for stuff like what we just did there, where we need quite a bit of mana all at once, this system that we currently have can be quite tedious. So I think I might tweak this a bit. Like I say, maybe get rid of the coke ovens, uh, maybe get some more bonsai pots and maybe try and set something up um, that is just a bit better, you know, try and get more endo flames and, uh, and get more bonsai pots to feed more endo flames um, with a similar system with the open crate. And then uh, hopefully, chat, next time we'll come back, we'll make the terrain scanner. We'll maybe look at getting some kind of better source of power. Maybe the ender pearl generator, we'll see. Uh, we'll get the terrain scanner. We'll start rebuilding the nether. And finally, I will also get some freaking cobblestone automation up and running because two streams in a row now, I've said that I want to get it done and two streams, we've kind of been sidelined by getting other stuff done instead. But uh, tomorrow I'll be back, I'll be live again and we will get this cobblestone automated uh, because right now, I think that's going to become, become a problem for us uh, in the future. And if we get enough mana automated and if we get the cobblestone automated, we could then also potentially look at automating uh, the old orchid here, which would uh, kind of negate the need for us to go mining quite so regularly which would uh, also be pretty useful. Um, but for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. 